Hi, I'm Richard Podmore, Director of Safety and Information for the South Carolina Department of Education Office of Transportation. A safe and efficient school transportation system is critical to the educational needs of our students and our continued training for our bus drivers and bus attendants ensures that they will have the skills and knowledge needed to safely transport students to and from school each day. We offer our thanks to Greenville County School District for all of their assistance in producing this video and special thanks to their students and staff for their participation. This video is not intended to display every type of wheelchair or mobility device you may encounter, but instead to show you the basic procedures and techniques for safely loading, unloading, and securing a wheelchair on your bus. Not every chair is the same, but they all serve the same purpose, to meet a student's mobility needs. You will learn that some chairs have easily identified manufacturer installed securement points, and that others will require that you attach your bus's securement hooks to a solid part of the chair's frame. Chairs may also be motorized, requiring you to become familiar with their operation. The retractors used to secure a chair to the bus floor and the passenger securement systems may also vary from bus to bus. It is your responsibility to become familiar with the mobility devices your students use and the equipment installed on your bus. While the procedures shown in this video are based on a trained driver and a trained attendant working together to load, unload, and secure a student in a wheelchair, there may be times when you alone will be required to do all of these things. Whether you are part of a team or working solo, there is no room for taking shortcuts and possibly placing a child's life in jeopardy. Always remember that you have a responsibility to know how to safely transport your students and your district is responsible for providing you with information related to the transportation needs of your students. If you have questions or concerns, make sure you talk with your supervisor and driver trainer before you begin transporting any students with special transportation needs. Thank you for your willingness to provide transportation services for our students and for your dedication to keeping them safe. Transporting a wheelchair involves much more than the period of time when the student and chair are on the bus. It entails the initial inspection of the chair prior to routing, pre-trip inspection of the securement equipment prior to transporting, and loading, securing, and unloading the student and chair. Inspection of chair prior to routing. Before transporting a wheelchair, the chair should be inspected either at the home or school for transport worthiness. Here are a few items to check before transporting a wheelchair. Check the brakes. Brakes should be able to stop the chair from moving. If the chair is motorized, locate the power switch as well as the motor gear locks and make sure they are functioning properly. Check the wheels spokes to be sure the tires are inflated and there is no damage. Check the overall condition of the chair for any stability damage. If add-on equipment is attached, a footrest, headrest, head support, etc., it must be in working order. However, the chair can be transported without add-ons if the student's IEP doesn't require them. If a tray is present, the tray must be removed and secured before transport. A foam tray can be used during transport. Check the lap positioning belt on the chair to be sure it is permanently bolted to the wheelchair. Determine if the chair is WC19 certified with identified securement points. Located on the chair frame, these eyelets are metal plates with an opening for attaching the bus's securement straps. If the chair is not WC19 certified, be sure that the wheelchair has a welded metal base frame that would support securement equipment. If the frame is too big for safely attaching the securement strap hooks, a special webbing loop approved by the securement system manufacturer may be needed. These loops will be provided by the South Carolina Department of Education School Bus Maintenance Shop upon request. Verify the weight of the student is under 270 pounds. For students weighing over 270 pounds, an additional set of retractors will be needed for the rear of the wheelchair. These are available from the South Carolina Department of Education School Bus Maintenance Shop. Pre-trip inspection of securement equipment prior to transporting. Retractors should be stored in the appropriate secured bag when not in use. Check to be sure you have all four retractors, that they are the same model from the same manufacturer and that they are in good working condition. Check your occupant restraint system, three-point lap shoulder belt system that secures the occupant to be sure you have all pieces, that webbing is not frayed, 
and that all buckles and clips are in good working condition. Check the floor tracks and the track above the window to be sure they are all secure, clean and free of debris, and are not damaged. Loading a student in a wheelchair. Preparing to load the student. Choose a safe location to lower the lift on level ground. The attendant should exit the bus and open the lift door. The lift door should always be secured, either with the latching bar at the top of the door or by attaching the chain and clip to the eye bolt on the outside of the bus. The driver should remain on the bus during loading to install the securement equipment, which will be detailed in the next segment. The attendant should clear the lift area, unfold the lift, and lower the lift while outside of the bus. Always operate lift from outside the bus. If anyone steps into the lift area, two feet around the lift, the attendant should stop the process and clear the area before proceeding. Inspecting the wheelchair before you put it on the lift. Good morning. Greet the student. Check the brakes. Brakes should be able to stop the chair from moving. Check the wheel spokes to be sure the tires are inflated and there is no damage. Check the overall condition of the chair for stability damage. If add-on equipment is attached, footrest, headrest, head support, etc., it must be in working order. However, the chair can be transported without add-ons if the student's IEP doesn't require them. If a tray is present, the tray must be removed and secured before transport. A foam tray can be used during transport. Check the lap positioning belt on the chair to be sure it is permanently bolted to the wheelchair and fastened around the student. Inform the student that you are about to put them on the lift. All right, I'm gonna push on the lift now, okay? Right. Loading the wheelchair. Never let the student wheel themselves onto or off of the chairlift. Release the brakes and position the chair at the lift with the students facing away from the bus. Position yourself in front of the student. Push the chair onto the lift while keeping your hands firmly on the lower base of the chair. Set brakes while on the lift. If the chair is motorized, make sure the power is off and the motor brakes are engaged. Connect the safety strap on the lift if the bus is equipped with a strap. Keep a firm hold on the chair and do not let go until the driver has a firm hold of the chair. Continually check the lift area to be sure it's clear while lift is in motion. All right, we're going up. Inform the student that you are about to raise the lift. Use the lift switch to raise the lift even with the bus floor. The driver should receive the chair and verbally affirm with the attendant that he or she has a secure hold of the chair. The driver should inform the student that he or she will roll the student into the bus and check for head clearance. The attendant should release the brakes while the driver has a firm grip on the chair. The driver should position the chair in the wheelchair slot and set the brake on the chair. The attendant should fold the lift, close the door, and return to the bus. Securing the equipment to the bus. Depending on the model bus and the manufacturer of the securement equipment, the floor mounted retractors and the occupant restraint system, the three point lap shoulder belt system or five point securement system on your bus may be slightly different from the ones we are using, but all are installed and used in a similar way. If you have questions about the specific equipment installed in your bus, be sure to talk with your transportation supervisor and driver trainer about the proper installation and use of the retractors and lap shoulder belt systems before you begin transporting students. The driver should retrieve equipment from the bag. Attach the retractors. Make sure the webbing is fully inside the retractor before attaching to the floor. If the retractor has a red strap, there is a small pin on the foot side of the retractor which must be depressed and held to release ratchet. Other types of retractors may have a similar release. Install front retractors in the outside tracks and the rear retractors in the inside tracks. You must always use all four retractors. Retractors should be installed to allow approximately 45 degree angle 
no more than 60 degrees and no less than 30 degrees from retractor to connection to chair. Foot of retractor must always be inserted away from the chair. Slightly elevate the retractor head, insert foot into the track slot and slide slightly forward or backward to secure. Ensure that retractor's positions mirror each other. Three point lap shoulder belt systems is in two parts. One part consists of an upper and lower box that houses the webbing and allows it to be extended around the student. This will lock in case of sudden stops. The housing boxes are black on the system we are using, but your bus may have a system which is slightly different in shape and color. The other part is a short lap belt buckle segment which attaches to the aisle side rear retractor and has a release push button very similar to the type found in automotive seat belts. Drivers should install larger box in the lower track on the wall of the bus, belly side out, positioned slightly behind the rear wheel of the wheelchair. This ensures that the lap belt will pass around and hold the student securely in the chair in case of a sudden stop. Safety note, always install the lower box first. If the upper box is installed first and not properly secured, both retractors may fall and cause injury. Drivers should install upper, smaller box in the upper track of the wall of the bus, slightly behind the chair and directly above the large box. It may have a red push pin to release webbing. Ensure that the foot is installed towards the rear of the bus, allowing the unit to pivot towards the chair. Angle the box foot slightly towards the window, push up to seat the foot, then slide slowly to lock into position. Five point lap shoulder belt system. Retrieve the equipment for the five point system. Secure the crotch strap under the front of the chair in single track slot by pushing the button to lock in place. Secure the lap belts in same slots as retractors behind chair. Slightly in front of retractor or attached to the top of retractor, the black track only. Secure the shoulder harness in a single track slot behind chair by pushing the button to lock in place. The shoulder harness should hang between the stanchion bar and the pillow, so when it is brought over the student's shoulders, only the stanchion bar is between the floor single track secured slot and the student. Securing the student and chair. Securing the chair. Attach the front and rear retractor hooks by pressing and holding the release pin while pulling the strap out of retractor body at a 45 degree angle. Pull strap up and follow track path up to securement eyelet and drop retractor hook into eyelet. Hook should be facing in at the front and facing out at the back. If no securement eyelets are present, then the retractor hook should be placed at a welded joint of the base of the chair as close to the seat as possible. If the hook is too small to safely hook to the frame, use the special webbing loops mentioned earlier. Retractor straps attaching to the chair should be near a 45 degree angle, no more than 60 degrees and no less than 30 degrees. Tighten both retractors, either front or back first, at the same time. Turn knob on the retractor side towards the chair to tighten. Securing the student three point lap shoulder belt system. Inform the student that you are about to secure the seat belt portion of the securement. Attach the small lap belt section to the aisle side rear retractor triangle using the snap hook. With this retractor system, grasp the black oval ring near the top black box Push in and hold the red pin on the black box and move the ring down to shoulder height on the student, then release the red pin. Take the lap belt snap hook and silver clasp and pass it through the wheelchair as close as possible to the student, feeding it between the backrest and seat. Then snap lap belt onto the triangle on the window side retractor. Pass the silver lap belt buckle connector in front of the student and hold it as close to student's aisle side hip as possible. Snap the silver lap belt buckle connector into the push button buckle and pull the loose tab to tighten it. 
bringing it closer to the back of the wheelchair and out of the student's easily accessible reach. Feed the slack back through the lap belt tongue to retract her box. Yep, I'm good. Uh, yeah, we'll take both feet, okay. Ask the student if he or she feels okay with the securement. Both driver and attendant should recheck for any twists or turns in the strap. If needed, readjust the shoulder height of the strap by pressing and holding in the red release button on the upper retractor located above the chair and pulling the ring downwards towards the student's shoulder level so it rests across the collarbone on the window side of the child. Release the red button to secure the belt location. Securing the student five point lap shoulder belt system. Pass the lap belts between the backrest and seat alongside the hips of the student and as close to the student as possible. Pull tight from the front. Check to be sure they are straight and not twisted all the way back to the floor or retractor. Both ends should be facing with the pull tab up and accessible. Pull the shoulder harness back to its full extended length to ensure that the belts are not twisted. The pull tabs are down and the metal ends can be brought together forming a T. The T should be held and brought towards the student. Then the end should be passed under the headrest and over the shoulders. The right side goes to the right and left side to the left without twisting. Pick up the blade, kingpin, and hold it with the pull tab up. Hold the blade up to nearest shoulder and slide shoulder connection onto the kingpin. Slide the crotch strap connection onto the kingpin. Slide the remaining shoulder connection onto the kingpin. Hold remaining lap belt connection, clasp, and clamp to kingpin until loud click is heard. Then give a slight tug to make sure it is locked. Pull tabs on lap belt to tighten directly over the student's hips. Reach down to the crotch strap, pull tab towards the floor to tighten without pulling lap belt away from its secured position. Slide loose webbing strap from shoulder harness between headrest and back of the chair. May have to go around behind the chair and feed straps through to grasp. Stand in front of the student and pull straps to tighten. Secure the chest clip. Switch and check. The driver and attendant should switch places, switch and check, and complete a hands-on inspection of the entire securement to verify. Front retractors on outside tracks with hooks facing in. Rear retractors on inside tracks with hooks facing out. Straps properly positioned close to the student, not over the wheelchair arms. Lap belt positioned across the hips. All straps tighten to remove excess slack. No twist in any strap. Safety note, secure every chair before you load the next chair. Unloading a student in a wheelchair. Releasing the wheelchair. Choose a safe location to lower the lift on level ground. The attendant should exit the bus and open the lift door. The lift door should always be secured, either with the latching bar at the top of the door or by attaching the chain and clip to the eye bolt on the outside of the bus. Keep all chairs secured until you are ready to put the chair on the lift. The attendant should clear the lift area, unfold the lift, and lower the lift while outside of the bus. Always operate lift from outside the bus. If anyone steps into the lift area, two feet around the lift, the attendant should stop the process and clear the area before proceeding. Um, we're getting ready to unload you, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to undo your, your seatbelt, okay? The driver should inform the student that he or she is about to detach the lap belt. The driver should detach the occupant restraint system and attach it to the side on the bus. The driver should detach the retractors from the chair. Okay, I'm going to get you and reach over and get you on the side. Okay, now I'm going to get you and we're going to roll you on the lift, okay? The driver should inform the student that he or she is about to roll onto the lift. Lowering the wheelchair on the lift. The driver should release the chair brakes with a firm hold on the wheelchair. The driver should push the wheelchair onto the lift with the student facing out and check for head clearance. 
the driver should lock the chair brakes. If the chair is motorized, verify that the power is off and the motor brake is engaged. The attendant should connect the safety strap on the lift if bus is equipped with strap. The attendant should receive hold of the chair and verbally affirm with the driver that he or she has a secure hold of the chair. Inform the student that you are about to lower the lift. Use the lift switch to lower the lift even with the ground. If anyone steps into the lift area, two feet around the lift, the attendant should stop the process and clear the area before proceeding. The attendant should not let go of the chair while releasing the chair brakes. The attendant should be positioned in front of the wheelchair and then pull the chair off of the lift. The attendant should set the brakes and bid the student farewell. The driver should remove any equipment from the bus floor and place it in the approved equipment bag. The attendant should clear the lift area, raise the lift, fold lift into the bus, and close the lift door. In the event of an accident, while we certainly hope that you are never involved in an accident, if you do have a mishap, no matter how small, there are some things you will need to do beyond what you may have learned during your basic school bus driver training. You will need to provide your supervisor with a list of passengers and a seating chart. Any securement equipment in use at the time of the accident will need to be quarantined removed from the bus and stored in a safe location until it can be examined. Do not use this equipment again until it has been cleared. Your South Carolina Department of Education School Bus Maintenance Shop will assist with providing replacement systems if the bus is otherwise safe to operate. In many cases, the manufacturer will request that the system in use at the time of the accident get sent to them for inspection and they will send out new replacements. While your first priority is the care and safety of your passengers, if you are able to take photos of the wheelchair post-accident before it is unsecured and removed from the bus, this may be helpful for the manufacturer. Do not, however, place your passengers or yourself in jeopardy to take pictures. Someone from the South Carolina Department of Education, Office of Transportation, or the insurance company may want to talk with you about the accident. As soon as possible following the accident, write down all that you remember so that you and your supervisor will have as detailed a report as possible. Thank you for being with us today, Greenville County Schools, the South Carolina Department of Education, and South Carolina Association of Pupil Transportation have worked together to create this video to promote the safe transportation of students on a school bus.